Let me try it again. Ooh. This is the Neil Rogers show. This is the brain. Any questions? Okay, now maybe there's nothing wrong with that machine. Maybe it's just allergic to Ricky Ticky. Is that possible? Very possible. Because he don't work in that machine. I'll be damned. Really? I'll be damned. Yeah. And you know that, that guy who says... Um, I'm a little bit nervous, but nevertheless, yeah, he don't work in that machine either. <laughs> so it's very selective. That's uh, our. Well, I'll give you the the uh, the test cart to really test it out on. I'll tell you the one that'll really give you the yeah. whole story. Ed. Oh. Yeah. Try Ed in that machine. By the way, I heard Ed uh, Saturday afternoon on the Keeper of the Keys show when I was going to dinner. Really? Yeah. Ed called in. It was a discussion about Elvis. You know. And at the end of the call, you know, Ed said, well, thank you very much. Oh, that sounds very good. I'd like to try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed works in that machine, so it's good enough for us. It's 11.06 at WIOD. We've got a mobile in Boynton Beach. Hello. Uh, hi, is Neil there? Speaking, sir. Yes, Neil, how are you? Uh, I, I have been listening to you coming back from the courthouse. I'm an attorney. Yeah. And... Uh, I've got to tell you, I'm a past president of my bar association, and, and a lot of what you say about the legal system, I think people find particularly frustrating. It is a slow system. It's not just a slow system; it sucks. I want to tell you, we had a hearing. We had a hearing in front of a judge in Dade County a couple of months ago, and this judge was no more interested in hearing any of the yeah. testimony from either side. It wasn't just me; from either side. He was interested in what time it was so he could go over to Birdine's to lunch to meet his pals over there because he's got a schedule every day. And he gave us such short shrift that there's no way in the world he could have possibly gotten enough testimony to make a meaningful decision. Well, it was ridiculous. It was embarrassing. It was just a waste of time. It's a problem inherent in the system, which I know is no excuse, but really an explanation. But I, I want to address a couple of comments about your friend from Coral Gables. When we were all kids growing up, I think many times we, we always had a kid on the block who was a big bully, and he could intimidate the rest of us because he was larger physically and stronger physically than, than the rest of us. When you're dealing in a judicial system, there is the ability, when an attorney is representing himself as your friend basically is, we all know, to be able to be the big bully on the block to be able to be someone who, because of his knowledge of the system, how the system works, and how to intimidate someone who is lawfully exercising his constitutional right of free speech, such as yourself, there's the ability in favor of that person to be the big bully. I think that's what's happening to you. But as an attorney, if I can just suggest to you, it's easy for me to say, but hang in there. I know it's particularly frustrating, but you are entirely correct. You have every legal right to represent what you represent as far as your feelings are concerned, to act as you feel appropriate, to comment as you deem appropriate. I listen to your show all the time going back and forth in the court. I, I'll tell you how far it went. Even some of the letters yeah. that he sent, now that Jimmy Johnson is leaving anyway, some of the letters that he sent were letters to Sam Jankovich at the U of M, and what he was hysterical about was because I don't no, support... I don't know, so I, I'll get the... We'll see you this evening. I'll let you know tomorrow. What is what Bye. is that? Mobile. Did you hear that? Yeah, mobile phone. Some another call cut in, and then he went away. You never hit the off button, did no, you? No, he just disappeared. Well, he got uh, lines crossed on the mobile, evidently. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say, some of the letters to Sam Jankovic because of what I said about the UM football program, I know. and because I don't support the football program. And because I made a joke about the U.M. had a better drug supply than the, than the Dolphins and so on. You remember that about oh, yeah. ten months ago? Mm -hmm. Now, what joke. the hell does that have to do with smut on the air, which allegedly, again, is the front for this whole campaign of hysterical homophobia? What does that have to do with it? If I don't like any of the U.M. sports programs, that's my privilege, okay? So you see, it goes down at the Westminster Dog Show. Yeah, it doesn't make wait. any difference what it is that I give an opinion about on the air. This individual is going to try to create a problem with it, okay? I can't wait to hear No about matter that what one. it is. Now, if anybody is stupid enough that they can't see through that, then they got a real problem. I can't remember what you said about the dog show. I said show. the dog shows are stupid, and I said those yeah. people that go out there prancing around oh, are silly. Yeah. That's it. So what? That's your opinion. Yeah. So what? No, I can't say that. See, I guess I have to clear all of my comments and all of my opinions through the censor for the community. <laughs> and I'm going to say it again publicly, okay? I don't know how long it's going to take the wheels of justice to start grinding in this town, but you people at the Florida bar, 
you're really you're really doing a great disservice, okay, by dragging your feet. We keep hearing, well, there's an investigation ongoing, and you can't talk about it. I'll, this is America, okay? I'll talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. Period. And how the hell long, how many brain surgeons does it take to see something that's as flagrant and as open and as horrendous as this witch hunt that's been going on now for nearly two years? How long does it take to see, see it for what it is? Just the letter to Janet Reno alone, just that letter alone, which has nothing to do with me, yeah. should, should be a real good eye-opener for all those people over there at the Florida Bar and anybody else who practices law here in the state of Florida. Can we go back to what Penny Daniels said on Inside Story when you were on last week at the end of the uh, report? <laughs> she said you had been investigated by many, many... You name it. Anybody you can think of. The governor's office, yeah. the state attorney's office, and every one of them you came out clean as a whistle? Mm -hmm. Is that what she said? That's what she said. Hmm. It's 11-12 at WYOD. Okay, all you uh, radio people are out there listening, look at this. Broadcasting Magazine this week, Help Wanted Programming and Production, <laughs> talk show host, mm. established talk station beckons quality talent for explosive South Florida market, topical, entertaining, superb, conversational, conversationalist. Mm -hmm. Oh, controversial conversation. This is a bad copy. EOE res resume to box B45 Broadcasting Magazine. We don't know what city. Mm. Yeah, I always like when it's one of those little ads like that. You mm -hmm. always know it's a real big station, <laughs> like WOFF. <laughs> anyway, it's 15 past 11 at WIOD. We have an open line in Boca, 278-9463. 278-WIOD. I apologize if that guy's still listening in his car, that lawyer, but um, that's not the first time that's happened on a mobile right. phone where somebody else cuts in. Sure. From out of nowhere. Miami, hello. Hey, Neil. Um, hey, Bird and Neil. How you doing? Okay. That's great. I'm really behind, you, Neil. Um, first, I'd like to say hello to Mike Gow, who converted me to listening to your show. Well, isn't that great? Let's say a big thank you to Mike, whoever he is. He's, he's a great guy. Well, We're you're a great guy, Mike. Miami. That's the rumor we hear. You know what? You know, I have a Geraldo report. Instead of talking about the things that, that you're talking about, that was spectacular, about, you know, um, what the press does it. Geraldo Rare that's talking about is Elvis still alive. I mean, he's down in uh, Philadelphia doing that, talking is, is Elvis still alive. And this guy was said that... Well, that's he, funny, because that's what we're doing on Wednesday. He, <laughs> this guy said he was paid $125 to yeah. sing like Elvis. And, uh, uh... What did you say your name was again? Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Well, listen, Jeff, call us again like about a year from uh, June, okay? It's 11.16 at WIOD. Jeff was good, wasn't he? <laughs> How do you like these calls so far today? Mm -hmm. D is it me, or do I feel like... Am I sitting cockeyed now at this mic? I don't know. No. I I'm not? I don't think so. I feel like I'm swung way right around here because my, my kishkis are squashing against the table. <sighs> There's something... Oh, I know what it is. Look at the mic stand. Okay? You see these mic stands are very strange, aren't they? Have you ever seen mics like this that kind of like teeter? Look at that. Have you ever seen any like that before? I never have. No. No. Unique. Different. Very strange. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's 11.17 now. Boy, things are really moving along now. <laughs> We're finally getting in gear and getting going here on a great Monday. Lauderhill, hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, is this Neil? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh -huh. I hope your buns don't hit the floor on that last call. He was very energetic. But anyway, yeah, he was good, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was. His intentions were great. Out. The end result sucked, but his intentions hey, were great. listen, everybody's got to get a ho-ho-ho and a jelly. Listen, yeah, not everybody's a comedian, sir. Really, uh, not to belittle your new problem with Hollandale, I mean, excuse me, Hollywood, PD. I mean, you already put down uh, Hollandale, and that was good enough. But you did bring up something uh, in your last hour about uh, Sonny Fox, which was... Uh, my wife was an avid listener, and I never knew what ever happened to him. Well, he got canned, sir. Okay, that's where he all got the good screwed. disc he got, go. he got the shaft. <laughs> the, the great disc jockey in the sky, huh? Right before Christmas time, and they yeah. made him disappear. Like they always do in this business, they just made him disappear. Yeah. No, I'm seriously speaking. I'm that was the reward. That was the, the great reward they gave him from Y100 for the super job he's been doing there in the morning for years. 
I'll tell you. Sounds like you got another call, pal. That's okay. Listen, uh, good you sure? speaking with you. Have a nice day. Okay. Oh, boy, thank God for that other call, okay? No, it's probably the guy on the mobile phone. By the way, speaking of Y100, there are big rumors in the yeah. business yes. about that little PD they have with his name, Steve. Yeah, Steve from Chicago. That he's going to be departing shortly. Really? Mm -hmm. He just got there. Yeah. Well, he's not, he's not doing anything. The station's... Uh, well, how do they do overall? I don't, yeah. I don't usually pay that much attention to him, and I still wouldn't were it not for the fact that Sonny is a great guy and he gave us so much help with the Camillo's house. Well, he's getting his clock but, um, cleaned by Keith Isley, to say the least. Well, look at that. They were 11th on the weekend, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that much. Wow. Woo. That's the rumor. Okay, here's uh, 12 Plus, Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to midnight. Hot had a 7-3. Mm -hmm. Power had a 4-1. Y100 didn't make the first page. Ooh, see what I'm saying? Y100 came in tied with Joy, 13th, with a 3-5. From a what? Down from a 3-6, yeah. before that a 3-8. See, they're not, they're not doing they anything. They dropped from 9th to 10th yeah. to 11th to 13th, dropping like a rock. Yeah. Breaks my heart. <laughs> And a David Ross over there, he's another brain surgeon, okay, at yeah. Y100. Another uh, great genius in the business. Anyway, it's 20 past 11 at WIOD. we got a mobile in Boca. Is this the same uh, caller? No, I don't think so. A different mobile in Boca. Well, I hope you have better luck than the first one. Well, I didn't hear the first one, so I'll, I'll try well, I just, anyway. I uh, just got some other mobile call that uh, screwed them all up. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, don't be sorry, sir, unless it was you. No, it wasn't me. I had an uh, opportunity to see that... Uh, that Inside story or edition or whatever that you were on there. Yeah. And I saw Sonny Rosenberg for the first time. Here's my theory. You know how every once in a while somebody will elect a dead person either accidentally or as a joke? Yeah. This is the first time that one actually took office. It was, it was just amazing. <laughs> was, the guy looked terrible. Yeah, he really does. He looked like uh, he's going through his third childhood, didn't he? What's that stuff, porcelain that gets rid of age spots? Yeah. He needs a, a severely large... Dosage. Well, no, you don't understand. When you're already the walking dead, it doesn't make any difference. He is an age spot. All right, well, anyway, so I'd like to add that uh, real gem and uh, keep up the good work. Okay. Bye. Thank you. 21 past 11 at WYOD. We have an open line in Boca again, 278-9463. Do I sound like i got a cold? Because mm -mm. I've been fighting it off. I've been taking Sinex or Sinutab or mm -hmm. whatever that stuff is. No, you don't But the cold sore is grotesque. There's that word again, Adam, grotesque. <laughs> Isn't it some coincidence that Adam has the same handwriting as Marshall from BB, BB, BBC <laughs> and, um, what was her name, Julia, the French chef? Yeah. Well, what a those, coincidence. Those Adams. Yeah. You know. uh, Miami, hello. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember the Vatican rag? Yeah. Is he sitting at the piano? Yeah, it's Tom Lear. Hey, how's that? <laughs> Pretty good, Tom. That was good. Does <laughs> that brighten up your day? Yeah, that's good for me. I think it's what uh, Sonny Rosenberg, you know, and, and all are doing to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's about all I had to add to your program. That's I'm... all your material, huh? That's all. Well, folks. keep practicing, okay? Practice <laughs> makes perfect. That's it. Bye. I like that. Wow. I like that a lot. That was really good. 22 mm -hmm. past 11 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade, 7 5. There it goes. And one in Broward. At 524 WIOD. Palm Beach, Gornish Delphin, okay, in Palm Beach, 655 WIOD. Yeah, I feel uh, like scratchy, you know. Mm, I think I'm going to be sick for about four or five days. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was going to be on vacation next week, and I um, changed my mind, but I haven't told them yet. Oh, they don't know this yet? No. <laughs> so I might just, I may reconsider. I may just take next week off and uh, depart. Yeah. Like to Brazil, mm -hmm. someplace like that. <laughs> um, North. North what? NB. No, Miami Beach, Neil. Oh, okay. Okay. Neil, I'm going to... North you... Beach. Huh? North Beach. No, South Beach. The land of the living dead. Okay, sir, just go ahead. Don't, okay. Don't I'm... let one little thing throw you so uh, bad. One little thing. Yeah. Neil, I'm glad you're speaking out finally. It's like you were swimming with one arm uh, for a while, and uh, you're starting to... Well, wor working in this market is like swimming with no arms, with your arms tied behind your back and your legs manacled together. 
Yeah, well, because they're constantly telling it, well, don't yep. do this and don't do that. And bah, 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 bah. And, uh, you know, they all operate out of fear and terror, and I'm not going to be in fear and terror of any putts anymore, okay, pal? It's just not going to happen. But I'm if, not going to do it. On the right-wing commentators, there's no problem with it. Yeah, this. that's right. They can go on the air yeah. and spread the worst bigotry that's and the worst right. hatred, and nobody ever has one peep to say about that. I okay? hear a lot of filth coming out of Mike Thompson. I, I, you know, it's his right Let me tell there. you something. I, I want to tell you, the worst crap that was ever peddled on the air back in the... 1977, in the year of Anita Bryant and the witch hunts in this town, right. some of the filthiest, some of the worst bigotry that has ever been on the year in the United States came from Mr. Courtney, Mr. Mike Thompson, Anita herself, Ellis Rubin, and I'm trying to think of some of the others who participated in those on-the-air witch hunts, some of the ugliest crap that anybody could ever imagine. And it was all such a big joke, you see... You see, this is what happens when you allow the majority to try to act against the minority, oppressed minorities. That, that's a classic, classic example when you want to attack an unpopular minority, just like they did to the Jews and the homosexuals and the gypsies in Nazi Germany. There's no difference. The sad, no well, difference. The part is that they're really the minority that, that, that just keep regrouping in a smaller and smaller way. And is out of it now, but those other douchebags are still working and doing the same trip. And I think you... Well, I don't think they are the minority. I think that when Steve the show the other day about David Duke and why he won that election in Louisiana, I think uh, for the same reason that the Republican Party has been appealing to the uh, white white males in the South and appealing to their inner racism and resentment. So, you know, it's, it's not the minority, sir. I guess hate it's the is the tyrannical popular. majority. Well, I wanted to say when you said they were all jealous, I think you really hit it on the head about this market. Instead, you know, you set a whole new standard down here of what's amusing and truthful. And I don't think they can handle it. It's really blowing their act out of the water. Yeah. And instead of trying to... And that's because they're a bunch of parochial juveniles, because if they ever heard what was on here in New York and in Chicago and in Houston and a lot of other cities around this country, it makes this seem like a Sunday picnic, well, the, but we're dealing with a bunch of parochial Florida yahoos, this okay? This is true. This is the real world out there. But I just want to say real quick about the Rick Siderman trip. I was working last week, and I couldn't talk to you until today's my day off. Uh, Rick Siderman reminds me very much of Roy Cohen. Do you remember him? Yes, I do. Okay. The biggest anti-homosexual kind of uh, looking for communists under every rug, Joe McCarthy's buddy, turns out to be the biggest queen in New York City. Yes, he and was. And I think Siderman has enormous problems in that regard. Well, I don't know. I would hope not, because we got enough problems we got already. Enough we don't problems. need him, okay? Exactly. But, uh, you know, like J. Edgar Hoover, there's a lot of real honest to God. But when he has the gall, when he's got the balls to come on his radio station, to muscle his way on his station again and accuse me of being a bigot, that's got to be one of the biggest jokes in the history of mankind, okay? Because when it comes to terminal homophobia and spewing the ugliest rot, including a lot of it that was done right here on this radio station, he takes second to nobody, okay? We have an open line in Dade, 751 WIOD on a jolly Monday. It's 1126. We'll be right back. OD.
Top 40, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the word is oblivious here today at WIOD, where it's 1132, and we have a call from Williamstown, Massachusetts. Hello. Danny, how you doing? I just okay. called to spend some of the company's money. Good. I'm up here in the Berkshires, about 20 degrees with snow on the ground. Great. That sounds good to me. It's only going to be about 75. The sun is shining. It's a perfect day here. Ah, so. uh, you see, now I'll get back, and I'll really appreciate that South Florida sunshine, which is all about we have to offer, huh? That is correct. And even uh, that's getting pretty grim lately, okay? Over the weekend, it was pretty dismal here, sir. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Those it's are the dismal. kind of days you really shake your head and wonder what you're doing here. When, it's, when the weather isn't great... There's not much else redeeming going on in this place, okay? Well, so those are the days you really kind of wonder. That's right. Well, at least we have you to fall back on, too, to oh, help yeah. us through the that's day. That's what they all say. All right. Well, I just want you to let you put your pin in the map, and i just like to call uh, Al a short douchebag, and I'll be back later in the week, and I uh, just hope you have a good week. Okay? Well, thanks a lot, pal. Yours is the best call of the day. That should give you a real good idea of what it's going on so far. Well, that's quite uplifting. It's okay. kind of chilly here. So have, have a, a wonderful one. life, pal. Say goodbye. Monday. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> God Almighty, you give them a little compliment, and right away they want to do about a half an hour. It's 11.33 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. And, of course, both of the Palm Beach lines are out of material, okay? But that's okay with us. Anyway, if you'd like to lose some weight... News Talk Radio 610, WIOD. 11.37 at WIOD. we got a call in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, Neil. Hi. I'm a first-time caller. Started listening to you when you were... First couple of days on the FM. Mm -hmm. Listen, I think I can give you an idea of why the uh, callers sound like they do. When you talk the way you did today, the way you sound today, it's obvious it's what's going on. It's hurting you. And rather than confront that and, you know, be constructive and do something about it, people are going to avoid it. Because it's feelings and it's, you know, it's something that... they Yeah, because there are a bunch of cold-hearted bastards in this town, basically. You know, you've got about maybe 10% of this community who are people who are caring and when you try to raise money for causes they're always the same ones who you know wind up giving and make it a donation and the rest of the people are totally indifferent all they want to do is take this is not a community of givers it's a community of takers and it's always been that way ever since i've been here and i'm sure long before well the, your listeners are primarily male and you know it makes them uncomfortable most straight men are very uncomfortable they just rather i mean i think they think it's amusing that you're gay and proud of being gay, but they kind of like avoid it. I like him, but oh no, I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's the whole audience that you know wants to avoid it like the plague. It's like as long as you don't say it, like with the late Paul Lind. I mean, everybody in the world knew yeah. that he was gay, and everybody thought he was really hysterically funny. But as long as he never said it, which he didn't, mm -hmm. then it was okay. It's but if he ever would have sat in the center square and said, hey, guess what, I'm coming out of the closet today, there would have been millions of people having coronaries all over the country because they right. can't avoid cope it. with that. Just avoid it. The only way they can cope it. with it if is if it's part of a freak show, like on Geraldo or Sally or one of those shows, and they've got, you know, cross-dressers, and they've got uh, S&M people dressed up with whips and chains and leather boots and all that. If it's part of a freak show, then they say, oh, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amusing? That's isn't that, you know, fill in the blank, you know? But, re but if it's an everyday thing and it's live with it, this is how I am, no, it's yeah. so good. No, well, gay no people good. have taken enough abuse in this, in this incredibly juvenile, homophobic society for long enough and it's about time that somebody stood up and said, hey, this is what I am, this is how I was born, there's nothing evil about it, and there's nothing sinister about it, and I'm not going to sit and cower and be ashamed of it, and that's what I've done for 12 years, and I'm not going to change now. I'm not going to go cower back into the closet to suit some homophobe in Coral Gables or some Mike Thompson on WNWS or Ellis Rubin or Rick Siderman or any of the Steve's other pals. I'm not going to do it. just ain't going to happen. I'm glad. I mean, that's one of the things I, that's one of the things I first noticed. I was like... God, he's not hiding it. That's You're damn right I, I'm not. I never even knew you existed until you came on the FM. I'm 20 years old. The AM band does not, did not exist on my radio. So, I mean, and I tell people about you, people from out of, you know, out of our area. 
And they're like, God, and it's just a fact. And I'm like, yes, it's just a fact, and it's great because, I mean, somebody needs to start. And if you're the one who started it, you're going to take the most flack. Yeah, I don't see anybody else jumping on the bandwagon, but mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, that's up to them. That's their privilege. There's a lot of cowards in the, you know, all over this country, and an awful lot of them happen to be gay. But that's, that's up to them. Yeah. And, of course, it would be easy for them to say, well, look at all the persecution you're getting now. We don't want that. Well, that's fine. If, that, if that's the kind of uh, cowardly existence they want to live, that's up to them. Yeah, if you mentioned women as often as you mentioned men, straight men would think you were great and would think that you were just... Well, I don't know what you mean, straight men. We've got, we're number one in men. Yeah, I know. Well, we've got an 8-8 eight, eight share in men in midday where there isn't anybody even close to us in men, and I assure you that the overwhelming majority of the men who listen to this program are straight as an arrow. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if you mention women the way you mention men, you know, people would think it was just like, well, he's flirting. So what? So does oh, everybody else... Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Well... Flirting, it comes off. It goes on all the time. I hear it on shows all the time, and I hear disc jockeys on the FM stations trolling for dates all the time. Yep. And I know damn well what goes on in those stations, and all these young things call in off the air. And uh, and I've seen it happen right in radio stations. I've seen guys uh, with with women in the studio. I've seen guys with other guys in the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody seems concerned about that. Now this is a very specific witch hunt against a very specific individual, and uh, it's you know nobody's fooling anybody. Yeah, I it really it really distresses me. I mean, I, when I say I, nobody is fooling anybody, that includes some of the people who were in on it right from the beginning, who were helping to prop it up and perpetuate it and add fuel to the fire. I remember one line which I will never forget as long as I live. And I'm not trying to create a problem with Steve because he and I have gotten along relatively well in the four months we've been here. But I'll never forget as long as I live a line. The day that he had this individual, this attorney from the Gables, on the air and gave him virtually an entire show to spew his homophobic propaganda against me, and they were discussing this alleged trolling for boys on mm -hmm. the air, okay? And Steve's comment was, oh, yes, I know, Neil. When other people say these things, they're kidding, but when Neil says it, he means it, okay? And I'll never, ever forget that line as long as I live, because I would challenge Mr. Kane to come into this studio and tell the audience, and I'd be more than willing to open it up to anything he wants to say. I'd like to challenge him to give any specific example of any individual I've ever trolled for on the air or off the air, because quite frankly, he knows nothing about my personal life. Uh, I've had maybe two encounters with him in restaurants, chance meetings over the last four or five years since I worked at WINZ and Zeta. And other than gossip and a lot of, you know, rumor mongering, mm -hmm. he hasn't got any idea what goes on in my life, okay, in spite of what he thinks he may know. Yeah, that, that trolling But to remark. suggest that I'm actually on here trolling for boys, I mean, you know, and to suggest that it's true, and when Neil says that he means it, I, I just can't imagine that anybody with a conscience would make such a statement. No, See, but again, I mean, it comes back to knowing the difference between professionally attacking somebody and taking shots that can be fun and whatever it is, and getting personal and really trying to do damage to a person's life or their reputation. That's right. That's the that's, difference. And that's there's some, why... peop some people in this business who have never learned the difference. That's why people love for you to make your comments about, you know, Alice, and that's professional, and they love for you to rip, and that's fine, and they'll call in and comment on it. But when it's to you and it's such a personal level, it makes them very uncomfortable. Yeah, well, that's it's their different. problem. One, one thing I've never done is let other people's problems become mine, and that's, uh, that's the only thing that keeps me going. Okay. Thanks okay, for thanks for your call. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. 1143 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. Now, this call from London, is that the... Oh, gee, remember the guy that called before? London? Yeah. Oh, boy. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yeah. Hi, Neil. This is Mercy from Kendall in London. Isn't that great? How are you? Terrific. How's Bird? Terrific. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm just calling to say hello and to let you know that the Queen sends her, her regards. Well, listen, tell I her she's got a lot of a lot of royalty in this town, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Especially in Hallam there, right? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> I just want to say hello. Tell her we have I a few to... aging queens in Hallandale, even as we speak. <laughs> I know, but you're still number one, my favorite one. Listen, I wanted to say hello to my douchebag son, number one. His name is Sergio. Sergio. Mm -hmm. Sergio. We love his suits, Sergio. Marcy. We love his suits. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband's cousin, his name is Alfonso. Okay. He'll kill me if I don't say this on the air. Anybody else, Marcy? Um, no, other than that, I don't care for anybody else. Okay, me here. either. <laughs> okay, listen, uh, have a good time over there. How long are you going to be there? Oh, I'll be back Wednesday. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Thursday. I'll, I'll give you a call the minute I get back. Okay. 
<laughs> Have a great time. I like those little beeps and boops on the other end of this phone. Can you can you hear them? Can you hear them? Uh, yeah, I think I can. Yeah. Listen, Sounds like Big Ben. Th- what? Pardon? This how's not, the temperature the, over there? The temperature is about 75 today, Marcy. Oh, great, because here it's very cold. Yeah, it'll be almost 80 I by can... the time you get back. <laughs> well, look, uh, um, take Say care. Say goodbye, and... Marcy. Say hello to everybody for me, especially my, my son, Sergio. And okay, my Sergio and Alfonso. Alfonso. Okay. <laughs> Say goodbye, Marcy. Goodbye, bud. Bye-bye. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Finally got to hear that call. 11.45 at WYOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. I like those little beep boops <laughs> in there. That was good. Beep boop. Wasn't that in the song we just played? Well, yeah. Doesn't he say beep boop? Kind of, Something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Miami, hello. Neil. Yeah. How are you? Long time listener, first time caller? Well, I'll be darned. Uh, hello, Bird. How are you? Fine. Uh, Neil, I happen to work for the uh, county of Broward. I'm a UHF repeater technician. I don't know if you know what that is. No. Uh, repeater stations. That's what we use to, uh, when you have handhelds. Is that like people that steal my material? Is that a repeater station? <laughs> <laughs> no, Neil. When you have handhelds, uh, repeaters are Handheld what? Pardon me? Phones? A handheld phone. No, no. Ha- a handheld radio. <laughs> two-way radios. Oh. Okay. Whatever you say. <laughs> okay. It's out of my league. They, they retransmit the, the, the signal from a higher, you know, like from a tower. That way you can have good coverage. Okay. Uh, where I'm coming at, I, uh... I service a lot of BSOs, uh, repeater stations, and their two-way radio. And I hang out at a lot of the uh, police stations. Mm-hmm. You were talking about that today. And let me tell you, I kind of know a few of them. And uh, believe it or not, they, they use their badge and they use the uh, the authority behind the law to take out uh, their, their feelings and their pre- uh, prejudice. Oh, I know that. There's no question about it. And we got some homophobes who work in vice for the Hollywood Police Department. And they can deny it all they want, but I have news for them. Right as we speak at this moment, there is some real interesting investigating going on. And if uh, I can nail them for what I think was really offered, uh, there's going to be a real mess that they better be prepared for in Hollywood, okay? Because when people start messing with my personal life and trying to uh, smear me, they got a real serious problem coming, okay? Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, like I was saying, a lot of people say, no, 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 everybody's in the police department. They wouldn't do that. Let me tell you. Yeah, Neil, that's what they think. I hang around them, and there's, I, I can name you many officers that hang around up there in, uh, what is it, Federal, where the COPA is? Yeah. And they just target specifically gays. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There, there's people that just target uh, uh, up and down uh, Sunrise, just target blacks, because they, they know for sure that if they're going to search in their car, they're going to find some, some uh, controllable substance. Even though they have no probable cause, but yeah. it's, 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 and you'll hear them. They'll come Kind of like from the Ed Davis School in Los Angeles. When Ed Davis was the police chief in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. they spent more time in trapping gay males than they did chasing criminals, which perhaps is one of the reasons now, uh, in the wake of Ed Davis from years ago, now that Los Angeles is one of the most crime-ridden cities in the entire world and one of the most dangerous places to live, uh, the things that they used to do there were just legendary, un- unconscionable. No, it, it, it's unbelievable, and you see them talking at, you know, in the station. They say, well, how many fags did you nail today? Yeah. How many? Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, well, I, I arrested three of them just for, for uh, uh, throwing something out of the car window. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it's just incredible. Um, I happen to be gay myself, but I cannot, uh, I, I feel like it, it's a pressure upon my shoulder. I like to come out of the closet and just be myself. You understand? Yeah. But I can't be. Well, don't you understand? Our society wants you to stay in that closet, wants to keep you uh, in fear, and wants to force you into clandestine activities, and then they want to entrap you into some kind of a thing that they can smear you and use you as another statistic and say, here are those dirty, perverted homosexuals doing all these clandestine sexual things. It's like a self-fulfilling death wish that society has in America for gay people, and it's going to stop. I understand. I mean, they're going to stop soon, but sooner or later, it's going to stop. You know, they, they, they got, you know, we got, uh, uh, like, rules and stuff. They talk about moral turpitude and different things like that. And, uh, um, you know, you talk to your superiors, and they say, yeah, we caught any fag here. He'd be, you know, he wouldn't last here, you know, like a snowball in hell and this and that. So, you know, you feel like you're... you're you got to stay in a, in a cocoon, in a cage. Yeah. Well, just consider the source, okay? Just consider the kind of slime balls you're dealing with, and then, it'll, you know, consider the source. Okay, Neil, mm-hmm. thanks a lot. And, uh, by the way, my friend Jackie, uh, she's on Nutrisystems, and she's doing great. Excellent. Okay, thanks a lot, Okay, pal. bye-bye now. Bye. Hmm. It's uh, 10 before noon at WIOD. One of the things that Ed Davis used to do in Los Angeles, he would send these undercover plainclothes cops in, like to adult movie theaters, mm-hmm. that were largely... Uh, 
most of the audience would be gay males. Mm -hmm. And these guys would be extremely good-looking young guys, say maybe 21, 22 years old, provocatively dressed with real tight pants on and so on. And he would send them in there into the theaters and send them into the restrooms. And they would make overt sexual gestures to other guys in the restrooms and then lead them, lure them into some kind of a sexual entrapment and then bust them. Great. And turn on all the lights in the theater and drag them out in handcuffs and do the whole routine. Mm. And uh, this is the kind of thing that goes on. They don't have better things to do. Yeah. Anyway, let me tell you about Toyota of Hollywood, speaking of... On News Talk Radio 610, WIOD. 1154 at WIOD, Tamarack. Hello. Neil, ponder a show today. Really? I'm sorry that uh, you're in such a you know kind of worked up mood because this was going to be a this, this is going to be a light call. Um, I uh, first of all I wanted to say my ex. Well, would you like me to come in and uh, you know do put on an act for you? Is that no, what you no, want? No, no, no. I, I you're, you're you're a real person. You're you're three dimensional, Neil. In fact, you're probably more than three dimensional actually. But um, but somebody told me that uh, they heard the bird mention my name last week on the show, so I just thought I'd call and say hello. It's been a while since I've spoken to you. Oh. Hello, Bert. What's your name? You know, Bert. I do? Yeah. I mentioned your name. You mentioned my name last week. I don't know who it is. I don't you, recognize you. In fact, it was like in the same breath as you mentioned Blind Mike. <laughs> over, oh. da over date, I'm Cliff Mitchell. It's a... Cr it's Cliff oh, Mitchell. gee, get him off of there already, will you? It's, we have two open lines in Broward, 524-WID. <laughs> Here's a guy who used to work on traffic patrol. He was a crank caller, okay? <laughs> he was a crank caller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monday, Go find then. a life, will you please, Cliff? Don't, uh, especially on a day like that. And he's got, he got the balls to call here and tell me it's a ponderous show. I got news for you. If we had no calls, it would be preferable to talking to him. Uh, 524-WIOD. There go the Broward lines. Book is open. 278-WIOD. I can't believe that, that he would I, have the gall to call his show. I don't remember saying this. Crank name. caller. I know, I don't and remember saying And he used to work for name. Traffic Patrol, okay? And he also was a board op at W Snooze, wasn't he? If my memory is correct, or was it here? I don't know. I don't remember. Here? He was here. a board op here, yeah. You know, one of the interesting things, speaking of crank callers, is that one of the things that I find fascinating over the years that we've been in the market is that you discover over a period of time that a, an astonishing amount of the cranking that goes on in the talk shows comes from board ops at other radio stations. Yeah. Isn't that astonishing? Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't right. want to have to go into mentioning all the names, you know, like Alan Michaels and Alan Eisenson <laughs> and all of these other, you know, Cliff Mitchell and Nick is laughing because he knows it's true. But, uh, you know, and thanks to our good friend, our little spy in Kendall, who's now in Israel, allegedly, I assume he's still there. You know, we uh, sooner Hopefully. or later we found out about all of this. Yeah. And it's just astonishing, you know, that these little, uh, little devils, man, have got nothing better to do, which is why a lot of times their show, the show that they're supposed to be working on the air, doesn't sound like it's together because they're too busy making crank calls to the other shows, okay? Or checking the lines, you know? Oh, he's got an open line in Broward. He's got an open line in Broward. You're going to kill him, Sandy. You're going to kill him. Miami, hello. Hello, Neil. How you doing? Okay. I've got a question for you guys. Um, I last week had a drow they were doing on WIOD shows, and they had a big board behind the people that were doing the shows of different pictures of people that worked at the station. Yep. And for some reason, your picture was not up there, and Steve Kane's picture was not up there. That's because they haven't taken our pictures yet. I mean, they have not only don't we have any business cards, they still we don't have any pictures to give out. They have pictures of Dorothy McIntyre and Bill Mullen, whoever the hell that is. Bill Mullen? <laughs> He's a salesperson here. His picture was up on the board there. Oh, get out of here. Are you serious? I'm Bill Mullen's serious. picture was on a board? Like he's one of the talk show hosts. Though. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Well, listen, he can come in and do noon to two today if he like. <laughs> the way I feel, he can come in right now. you got to be kidding me. I'm dead serious. Bill Mullen's picture was on a Doral? <laughs> Oh, my God. And not Neil I'm Rogers. I'm surprised that Bill McQuig's picture wasn't up out there, you know. <laughs> now, they just, uh, we're just not important enough, sir. They haven't taken our pictures yet. So when we go out on these appearances, at least now we got the bumper stickers to give away, which will be something. But, uh, yeah, we don't have much. I mean, this was a big, fancy board, and it made the radio station look real nice and everything. And Dorothy McIntyre was up. I mean, Dorothy's a wonderful person and yeah. everything, but uh, what the hell has she got to do with the Doral? That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Was so, the Dean's well, picture on there? Who else was on there? Anybody we know? Uh, Mike Winelli was the only talk show. Well, thank God he was, he was out there all week. He didn't need to have his picture up. He was out there all week. And, um, and, and of course, all the sports talk people were up there. Yeah. Hmm. That's great. You mean even Joe Zagaki was up? Three times. Wow. Three times. Well, that makes me feel real good. Okay, pal. Okay, you have made, a good day. You made my day. Thanks for the spy report. Okay. Perfect day for that call. Oh, my God. Perfect show. Bill Mullins.
Hmm. <laughs> oh, an attack in Boca? Hello. No, no guts. They Typical. just don't have the balls to do it. They're in Boca. They call in. They give all kinds of vermin in the phone to Nick. Mm -hmm. And then we go put them right on the air first ahead of everybody else, and they hang up like a bunch of spineless wimps. Virtually every Probably time. Probably one of those right-wing West Palm Beach or Palm Beach County crowd, you know? One of those homophobic Palm Beach Countyans. Man, there is. You talk about right-wingers, man. That county is nothing but rednecks and douchebags, basically, in Palm Beach County, which is why they got the perfect radio stations up there, man. <laughs> perfect for them. I reflect. Okay, somebody dropped off in Dade as we're trying to set it up for that big noon to one hour, and uh, the Palm Beach line is open. We know we got a lot of good friends up there in Palm Beach who are really very deeply concerned about me and this show. 655-WYOD. <laughs> 655-9463. And uh, let's see, it's noon. That means April Wortham, I believe, is standing by with that 12 yeah. o'clock WIOD refreshing news. A breath of fresh air, April. <laughs> and we'll come back with our number three at 12.05. Anyway, it's 12.05 at WIOD to be continued, as they say. Uh, and we're back for our number three on a Monday. It is some kind of day here at the Isle of Dreams, ladies and gentlemen. It is some kind of day. We have an open line in Palm Beach. Did I just do that twice? I must be catching it from Ranieri. I just said it is some kind of day, and I said it again. They got some package plans. Now, don't get me wrong. We love Uncle Mike, but he just has this thing. He's got one of the most devious ways of killing time. See, he only does. He's on for four and a half hours, which is a long shift. But when you figure it out, he's only on really for two hours and 15 minutes because he says everything twice. He says everything twice. It's uh, 12.06 at WIOD, six minutes past 12 at WIOD. No, I'm serious. You're going to find out that if you say everything twice, we could have a two-hour show. It just dawned on me. It just dawned on me. It just dawned on me. If you said it three times, what's... what's... Now, that's a pretty clever way. I've got to be honest that Ranieri is a devious guy. And yes, he is. He has figured out... I used to feel sorry for him because he starts at 5.30. When we were on in Zeta in the morning, we used to start at about, you know, quarter to six. But 5.30 Brutal. till 10 is a long shift. Yes, it is. And most of the morning shows start at Well, when at you say everything twice, you're only doing two hours and 15 minutes. When you say everything twice. <laughs> Cutler Ridge, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Congratulations on your good numbers. Well, and thank I'm you so much. about your recent troubles. Well, uh, it just, and they're not recent, sir. They're just ongoing. Ongo yep. Uh... Damn. Thanks to the brilliance and the speed of our judicial system and our attorneys, it just continues on and on forever and ever. Well, I got an idea. I was hoping maybe this help. Um, putting so much pressure on you as Yahoo from uh, Coral Gables. I want to know, can we apply some reverse pressure? If you get, give a huge listening audience, I thought you know, writing the FCC in the Florida bar might uh, open a few eyes. Well, it's a free country. You can't anyway uh, give out the uh, information on that in the air, could you? Well, I, sh I can get the addresses. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, no problem. Also, if, this, if these people are successful, they're really screwing around with our listeners' rights. To that's true. Well, I, that's, that's, that's the point that we were making, making on the station. Hell, I'll tell you that's that. the point we were making on the station a couple of weeks ago, and they're already making inroads because, in case you haven't noticed, and I'm sure you have, that there's a serious amount of our material which has already disappeared from the air. Mm -hmm. And this isn't because of any barrage of complaints by anybody in the audience. It's because of bending and cowering to one individual who thinks that he's going to decide what can be aired and what cannot. Well, I think we need a little more backbone there from the management. Well, we need a lot more backbone and a lot less paranoia from these attorneys up in Washington who think that, the, you know, the best way to do it is play it safe and don't do anything to offend anybody, and you cannot compete in a marketplace while everybody around you is doing, you know, like Channel 7 is showing. What's that movie they're showing tonight with all the bare breasts? Blame it on Rio. Blame it on Rio. And Herman and McBean are doing the most outrageous stuff that you'd ever want to hear in your life, and yet we're under some kind of, uh, you know, separate guideline. I don't play that kind of ball game. I'm not going to do it anymore. In other words, if we're all in the same arena together and we're in the same business, then I'm going to operate by the same guidelines as everybody else does. You should. Listen, to my last point is uh, on the Steve Kane end of it. Uh, when this all first came out and you were allowed to talk about it a couple of weeks ago, I was amazed at his weak response and how he explained 
Oh God! How he explained how he just thought it was a joke and whatnot. I mean, no. Well, one you know, you know, there were two. There, there home. were two people, sir, who called, and I haven't said anything up till now. But as you can tell, I've reached my limit. Yeah. There were I don't two blame people you. on that one afternoon who called, and they had the best question of all. And the question, and you're referring to it. Yeah, uh, I the heard. The question that. was, how come when Neil was on the other station, you brought the individual on the air, and you were, um, you know, a party to it and having a good time with it, and it was all a big joke. Now, and now that problem. this individual has turned against you, how come all of a sudden you're singing a different tune? I mean, he, and the response was, "Well, I all thought it was all in good fun. It yeah, was he, never. It was never in good fun. It was just as malicious then as it is now, if not more so. And uh, that little, that uh, that don't hold any water with me, sir. Public apology might be nice. Well, I think hmm. perhaps an anyway, explanation. Okay. We're all for you, and I don't. Um, I think uh, they, they all, you ought to start playing any bits you want because they're all funny. They're all intended in good humor. And I got news for you: there isn't anything that there isn't it. anything that we weren't playing over on the other station. And the FCC had no problem with any of the stuff when it was on WINZ, and they're not going to have any problem with it now. <sighs> okay? Because we've never ever played anything on the air that doesn't belong on a radio. Period. And I'll stand by that. Don't forget the addresses for the Florida Bar and the FCC. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Good. Ten past noon at WIOD. I mean, how many times do you have to go through the same thing before it's determined, well, you know, it's, it, it's always been okay up till now. There's mm. no reason why there should be a problem with it now. Hmm. But, man, if you could sit in there with these, with these Washington attorneys who play it real close to the vest and, oh, gee, whatever you do, don't do this and don't do that. You know, what kind of crap is that? How much are you willing to sacrifice before you say enough is enough already? Go do your own show. Boy, you look like you're in just deep, deep thought. Uh, no, not deep thought. It's just, um... Looks like your brains are starting to explode through your forehead. It's, uh, very serious stuff. It is very serious stuff. And, you know, hey, we're sitting here with a pile of numbers, and that's great, but, uh, what does it mean? What in the world does it mean? We had all those numbers at Zeta. Yeah. And by the last three or four months there, we were ready to blow our brains out. We couldn't do anything. And I'm not going to relive that same episode all over again. That's one of the reasons I left. That was the main reason I left. Yeah. Is because it became unbearable. Now, the numbers were great, and they had all kinds of business on the air, but you still have to be able to have a good time. You still have to be able to come in and do a radio show. And there isn't a, there isn't a Chinaman's chance in hell that I'm going to go through that experience and relive it again. It's 11 past... Twelve fourteen at WIOD. Oh my God! Now you see, this is what really gets me. Who do you think the first thing that we've got on the um, fax machine? Who do you think it's from? Oh no, no. The three 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 lady. Ah, Dossie. Is that incredible? What's on? Dossie, don't you understand? We don't want to hear from you. We don't want anything to do with you. Okay, go away, please. Good Lord. Then we get this. <laughs> then Richie in Deerfield writes, I know that this may sound strange, but I don't care if you are a homosexual. And as a P.S., do you care that I'm straight? <laughs> that I'm straight. No, Richie, I really don't. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to show you something. I'm not going to read it on the air. I'm tempted to read it on oh the air. You my. read it first, and you see if I should read it on the air. Ah! Yeah. God. Oh, God. <laughs> no. By the way, Peter, I got your uh, letter here that I'm reading, <laughs> and um, good luck to you. Good Lord. Oh, And thanks my. for the support. Now, now, yeah, now what, what do you think I should do with that? Now, it's that's... on a fax machine from Sue, does that say? Yeah. What do you think? I think give it to him. That's what I would do. Well, what's that going to accomplish? Yeah, I always like to hear his responses. Oh, do you? To things. Okay, here's a plantation. Hello? Hello? Yes. Um, is Neil still around? What do you want, sir? With a phony voice, what do you want? I don't... I don't or ma'am, or whatever you voice. want. I've got a cold. I can't help that. What can we do for you? I wanted to talk to Neil and compliment him on... What do you, what do you mean you want to talk to him? Is he still around? What does that mean? Well... He just uh, come in, and I've been waiting this long, and all of a sudden, I think he's the greatest person this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, I, I have my doubts. Who do you think you're talking to, ma'am? Oh, Neil? Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. 
Do you know, I've got a, you know, I talked to your producer. Yeah. I had never called you before, but I had mm-hmm. to commend you. Neil, you did the greatest thing with Craig Worthing that anyone, I mean, competition. Well, that's interesting that you would say that, because the only other call I had about having Craig on the air was some old bag in Boca who accused me of being, what was the word she used? Ingratiating, and that was all a phony act, and now I always rip Craig on Craig, the air. Craig, yeah. <laughs> believe me, do you know what that meant to that man? You did the greatest thing, and I mean it. I don't know. Well, what I don't think it was a great thing. I mean, I had him on the air, and I enjoyed it, and I like him, and I've always liked him, and, and I hope know, I wish him well. And I hope he can get out of the business and uh, you know get all his grief off his hands because that's what this business does to you. Oh, it, I'm telling. Well, what I told your producer, and believe me, it's true. Believe me, Neil. I had 52 calls to that Saturday night, and then I got to 57. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. People that couldn't understand why Sally Jesse Raphael was on the line. They were very upset. What do you mean you had 52 calls? About what? (laughs) They want to know where Craig was. You mean on your show? No, on my telephone. I take care of... Okay, now you can call them the douchebags. I know, I just don't know what you're talking about. I'm not attacking you. I'm just trying to understand what the hell you're talking about. I love Craig. And they loved him, and they couldn't understand how a studio could do that to him. Because they... Well, what do you want me to tell you, dear? I had him on the air for four hours. We had a great time. I wish him the best. You know, you were the most gracious. And, you know, I, I wish you were my friend, because I'd like to have you for a friend. Well, I don't want to be your friend, okay? No, but I'm just saying, I think you're a good friend. In fact, I don't want any friends. I want to go into a cocoon somewhere, okay? Oh, maybe, come on. Maybe now. once in a while saying hi to the puppies, but not too often, okay? <laughs> just once in a while, but have a wonderful day, as Craig would say. Have a great day. <laughs> Oh, God. 1218 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463, Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to talk to Neil. You're speaking to him, sir. Why does everybody think they're talking to somebody else? I don't understand that. Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. That's okay. Don't feel bad. Well, I'm a little nervous. But, first, but nevertheless, <laughs> I'd like to thank you. sounds like that guy, doesn't he? Uh-huh. A lot of people don't uh, give you credit for the work that you've done, but Camilla's house is just uh, outstanding. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm a black man, but uh, you're the furthest thing from the bigot I've ever seen. Seventy-five hmm. percent of the people at the Camillus House serve is black. Right. Well, I don't care what color they are. They're people who need help, and that's all that counts. They're human beings. Right. And the people that are attacking you for for what you stand for, they are just insecure about what they are. Evidently. Right. You know. Okay. And, uh, keep keep on keep it on. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Twelve nineteen at W I O D. Oh, open phones. The show on gun education has been canceled today. No Isn't that, uh, interesting. kidding. Uh, here are the addresses, really? by the way, for the uh, Florida bar. Why would you give me that one on the bottom? Boy, that's getting a little sinister now, isn't it? That Nick man, he gets carried away. <laughs> Florida bar, the address is 444 Brickle Avenue, Suite 211, Miami, and a zip code is 33131. That's Florida Bar, 444 Brickell Avenue, Suite 211, Miami, 33131. I'm not telling anybody what to write, but certainly uh, people who are thoughtful and want to write rational letters about this abuse of the legal profession certainly should be entitled to do so and have their voices heard. And especially, I'm sure that we have attorney-type people in this audience. Yeah, you bet. Who have been very conspicuous by their absence, by the way, for the most part, in this ongoing uh, abortion that's been going on for nearly two years and this ongoing abuse of your profession, that's the thing about the medical profession and the legal profession, man. Most of the people just want to look the other way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we don't, we don't know about any abuse. We don't know about that. Because they have their heads buried in the sand like ostriches. And the address for the FCC, uh, it wouldn't do any good to write to the local uh, FCC, Washington, D.C., and the zip code is 20554. Mm-hmm. That's the Federal Communications Commission, Washington, D.C., 20554. Okay, it's 21 past uh, noon at WIOD, Miami. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Okay. That's good. Hi, Glenn. Hi. Hey, Glenn, I just wanted you to know I love your laugh. Thank you. Um, listen, I just have a message for all those people out there who seem to be so concerned with everybody else's personal lives. Mm-hmm. Why don't they mm-hmm. just start getting involved with something good why don't they waste their time maybe trying to save amazon rainforest or something you know because they're negative people and they're not involved in doing anything positive because that's not their nature they are negative people and they want negative fallout to lie in their wake anywhere they go 
Uh-huh. Well... See, one thing I've discovered about, you know, you can have a political argument and pros and cons, but one thing I've discovered about the right-wingers, they always talk a good game, just like Bush talks about his nebulous thousand points of light, but when it comes down to charity and when it comes down to helping people, 99% of the time it's those who are the liberals, those who are progressive thinkers, those who are the humanitarians who really care about people, who put their money where their mouths are, and generally the ones on the right who got more money than God, they still got the first dime they ever made and they aren't about to part with it. Right. Well, it's just it's a, it's ponderous how these people, you know, they just they just can't spend their time doing anything good. You know, mm -hmm. I've I've done my part. I, I'm a member of the National Wildlife Federation, Audubon, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, I don't concern myself with what anybody else does. You know, why can't people just follow suit and just become good, positive people? Well, because that's just unfortunately, time? it's not our nature in this country. Did you see the piece on 60 Minutes last night on the apples? No, I did not. And on not. the spraying of insecticides oh. and on this UDMH, which is a cancer-causing uh, chemical. Um, right. One of the pesticides, when you ingest the apples or the apple juice, it turns into UDMH, which is cancer-causing. And uh, the incidence of cancer, I think they said, is like 40 times greater or 400 times mm -hmm. greater than in those people who don't ingest it. And a lot of kids are especially susceptible to it because they drink a lot of apple juice and a lot of applesauce and baby food with apples and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the EPA is just now getting around to thinking about trying to have this substance banned, which is going to take up to five years. Great. Um, so if, if anybody out there really thinks the government gives a damn about what we eat or quality of life or anything like that, that is not a concern in this country. Just not a concern because we're more concerned with foolishness. Well, this stuff should become a concern amongst people because we don't realize how much we're trashing our world and our lives. Yep, you got terrible it. terrible stuff. Okay. Well, I just want you guys to know I love you guys. I think you're great, and I even named my two little rats after you guys. Two little rats. Okay, <laughs> a lot of people can relate to that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> boy, boy. Have a good day. A positive 23 person. past noon at WIOD. Everybody who's for abortion was at one time themselves a feces. 26 past noon <laughs> at WIOD. Those right to lifers, man, they're really right on top of it, aren't they? They are right on top of what he just said. That's a classic. Here's a Jimmy Muzak in Dave. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, we were all one-time feces. <laughs> Listen, I just uh, have a little uh, question for you, if you don't mind, this uh, regarding this newest controversy. And, and I'm speaking from the position as a media buyer. I'm working with the, the Shark Tournament at the University of Miami. We're going to buy Ranieri's show, uh, but I'm getting the impression that your management is not really coming out strongly behind you on uh, these people that are uh, harassing you. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're not coming out strongly behind me. It's just that we have a difference of opinion on how you deal with it. And from the time that I first, you know, before I came here, I warned them that this was all going to go down because I knew, you know, I've, I've, I've already had... 15 months of it in the other two stations mm -hmm. and uh, when it started happening here I said you got to deal with it immediately and swiftly and strongly and their attorneys you know it's always hey well you know just lay back this guy's gonna go away nothing's gonna happen and of course here we are now many thousands of dollars later and just as I predicted it's not going away and uh, you know it's gonna cost them an arm and five legs but that's their problem there you know again all these people know better than you do mm -hmm. that's the one thing that frustrates me about this business is that no matter how successful you've been they still look upon you as some kind of an underling some kind of a moron as if they got all the answers and they're you know they got all these big high-paid attorneys I got news for you man half of these attorneys couldn't couldn't stick their finger in their ear okay <laughs> litigate their way, or any, out of or way any to place, that is correct yeah. well here's my thought on the matter is that if you if you buy a package and uh, you consider yourself a commodity uh, if you buy that package you take the good with the bad knowing what you're getting into with both eyes open and you certainly uh, they're certainly making the money by the increase in the uh, revenues oh there's no question the about that so, there's absolutely so, no question about that then uh, you know my question is why what's the problem why can't they just resolve this for you and let you go on doing what you do which is bring a little sunshine into the two hours the, now, I'll, I'll give you the honest answer okay because today is my day to be perfectly honest <laughs> all right more you're so than Frank instead of Neil today more so than you usual, all right? And that is because the FCC attorneys up there in Washington have got them tinkling all over themselves and changing their underwear every five minutes, which is typical for all those FCC attorneys by overreacting to certain things that really needn't be overreacted to. And as a result, rather than continuing to do what we know is right, we have to uh, just cut back and do this and do that and do a little tap dance. And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely, utterly ridiculous. And it's unacceptable. 
You know, they, like, like I said, there comes a point in your life when you just say, I've been abused enough, and I'm not, put, I'm not going to be singled out for any kind of special treatment. Mm. Period. Well, listen, we've got a home for you down here in the Keys. You know? Yeah, I, I, good we've luck got, to you. We've got per capita more old farts probably than anybody else in the entire world. But, Great. Uh, you know, I just I have a feeling that they could uh, get entertained as much as uh, the young farts like we do. Uh, by well, what this you do. is the Jimmy music. <laughs> there can't be more than one. What's the name of the station you work for, Jimmy? WCTH. Catch. Oh, yeah, that's one of my Catch. favorites. Yeah, we're on the book, too, as a matter of fact. I got in the book. We, we saw a little tiny piece down at the way. A little bleep, huh? <laughs> little bleep. probably right in there with Zeta. <laughs> well, you know, if, uh, we do what we can. Now, but, do uh, they call it Catch because you run all those fishing reports? That's probably got something to do with it, yeah. 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 And we, uh, Steve Kane still, from uh, as far as I know, is going to come fishing for shark with us. Uh, we got There's an issue there, I suppose, we have to take up. Uh, because I think, as I said about your management, uh, if your your coworkers and the people that profess to be, um, you know, let's just say, in agreement in the court on most issues with you when you're popular and you're riding the crest, if they're not going to stand right there at the top of the wave with you when there's a little difficulty, well, you know, um, it kind of doesn't sit too well in the stomach, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that's something else we'll have to address. But uh, I just I, I have difficulty understanding why they can't. Uh, get these people off your back immediately. There's got to be legal recourse. Uh, if there's harassment, is the first word that comes to my mind. Well, if you had any idea how much harassment is going on against me, against my sponsors, against my friends, against people who just who just happen to listen to and enjoy this show, who aren't who don't fall into any of those other categories, it would just it would boggle your mind. You just couldn't even begin to believe it. And yet, I'm supposed to sit here and believe that all the legal resources in the universe can't combat that. And if that's the case, then we don't live in a free country at all. We live in some kind of a a fascist dictatorship. Okay. And, yeah. ba and based on this latest episode in Hollywood, I'm beginning to believe more and more all the time that we really do. We live in a fascist state. Uh, if power the buck, you know, is what I've always considered to be almighty, even though it uh, philosophically doesn't sit well with me. But uh, it always has been in the past, and, and you generate that. You generate capital and income, and you keep people's jobs going. And it would seem to me that uh, as a valued asset that they would uh, protect your peace of mind so you could keep producing what you are producing. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, well, you're supporting You know what they say, the Jimmy, what goes around. <laughs> Comes around. <laughs> Have a good day. So to speak. Bye-bye. 1232 at WIOD. Okay, welcome to the Rogers Show, WIOD. Some of those cards are a little muddy there, Nick. 1238, 22 till 1 at WIOD. Boca, hello. Boy, these Boca Oh, that calls. Boca, man, that line is the... That's my favorite of all Hottest time. Hottest line we Let's got. Let's put that one on hold so we don't get any more calls from Boca. <laughs> Miami, hello. It's my favorite because I didn't have to wait till you threw it in. Well, isn't that good? A little bonus there for you, sir. Neil and Glenn, hello. Hi. God, Neil, I haven't talked to you since you changed your format from issues to this type of thing, but I listened to the hell out of you. Let me uh, give you more on an address you gave a minute ago, okay? The FCC, the, the total address, and you, I think people need to have that, is the... You write the FCC... Mass Media Bureau, 1990. Wait, wait a minute. Let me write this down. Where, oh, yeah. where are you getting this? I, I I looked it up because I wrote. <laughs> I beat you to it. I wrote a few days ago. But give, wait, let me give you this address. FCC, Mass yeah. Media Bureau, yeah. right? 1919, M as in mother, mm -hmm. M Street. Mm -hmm. M as in mother. I couldn't resist that. M Street, <laughs> Northwest. Yeah. And the zip code you gave before is correct, Washington, D.C., 20554. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's incredible. Okay, now, FCC Mass Media Bureau, 1919 M, as in Mother Street, Northwest, <laughs> Washington, D.C., 20554. That yes. is a mouthful. And let me say this. Uh, people that are against the show, if you want to say it that way, they're going to write. Oh, I don't care. No, but what I'm saying is this. Those people that feel like me, I don't call. This is the first call. You know, Once I tried, you blew me off the air, but that doesn't matter. The thing is that uh, if they find this type of show entertaining, you know, I'd like to read a book right now, but obviously I'm not. And if they find this thing entertaining, remember that there are those people that will take away our entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with this type of entertainment. So as far as I'm concerned, you know, if you gave them a format for a letter, it's a mistake. Yeah. People out there, you've got to write. And let me tell you something else. I'm glad the thing sort of came to a head because uh, I was pissed. I mean, I call, I wrote a note to Jicka. I called him up pansy for being afraid to discuss with you guys what was going on. No, no, wait a minute. He wasn't afraid. Let's be fair. He wasn't afraid to discuss what was going on. We, he was just put in a position where we didn't, we couldn't at that time let him discuss what's going on. He's been very cooperative. In fact, he signed an affidavit 
uh, in regard to all of this stuff that's been going on because he was hassled for uh, for a solid week himself. And when he's on here tomorrow, you can go to the bank that he'll uh, be more than willing to discuss it. So don't don't take it out on Jika. No, Neil, I was wrong. No, no, I, I wrote him a note, and then I found out I was wrong. He t- not only that, he told me, I guess I can say this, he told me his bosses at the Miami News even put constraints on him. That is correct. Mm-hmm. So, and it's no, interesting no. the Miami News was, when it was in existence, owned by Cox. I just want to remind you that. Yeah, one last thing and I'll go. Do yeah. you, you have any idea what time we'll be on? I'm home today, but I'd love to tape Jacket tomorrow. He'll be on the whole show. Four hours? Yeah, I he always I'll is. i buy some more radios with timers. Neil, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 1241 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade and in Broward. 751-9463 in Dade. 524-WIOD in Broward. And Boynton Beach on the Palm Beach line. Hello. Hello. I've got a suggestion for you on how to protect your First Amendment rights. Mm-hmm. It's uh, borrowed from a cartoon that appeared in our wonderful local fish wrapper. You're to ne- rename your show, Neil Rogers Show, and its effect on Islam. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. Then you'll have all the First Amendment rights you want. After yeah, all, yeah the Ayatollah Hugh... would probably come over and listen personally. You got it. Donahue had an entire show this morning of people protesting the fact that nobody's protesting the death threats to Solomon Rushi. No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to say again the same thing. I don't want to get into that because we don't get into heavy topics right. on the show. But the fact is that in this country, the right-wingers have been burning books and they've been burning phonograph records and CDs and they've encouraged kids to get out there and have these, these mass book and record burnings for the last eight years this has been going on. And nobody gives a damn about it, okay? But all of a sudden, you know, the, why should it surprise anybody coming from the Ayatollah? The guy's mad as a hatter anyway. Why should that surprise anybody? You know, if if, if, if somebody steals something over there, and this is not just the Ayatollah, even when the Shah was there, they cut off their hand. Mm-hmm. That's Islamic justice. That's the kind of barbarians they That's are. That's right. So why should it surprise anybody? Well, it but the fact you. is that it goes on in this country, and people are being suppressed and repressed all the time, and nobody gives a good goddamn about that. Mm-hmm. Well, you might be surprised at the... Uh size of the audience that you have, how much of it's conservative. Because my mother and I listen all the time, and we're very conservative. Well, let me say this to you. The true, con- the true conservative allegedly should be more against repression of speech than anybody else. That's oh, not I a, have, that's I not, have no problem. No, with I'm not talking you about you. I'm just talking about conservatives in general. Yes. Well, it just surprises me. Because the conservative that... wants government out of the individual's life. They want less government. Right. Supposedly. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. 1243 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524. Uh, it would help, I guess, if we gave the right well, number. Maybe. Well, let's try some different numbers, okay? Yeah. That might be more effective. 524 <laughs> WIOD. And in Palm Beach, no matter what number we give at uh, no, Garnish Telephone, that. nothing no. matters up there. 655 WIOD. 655 9463. Boy, that Palm Beach County is something, aren't they? Here's a mobile in Delray. Hello. Yes, Neil? Yeah. I, this is a lawyer that got cut off two hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but somebody <laughs> uh, cut in, cut your water off there. That's quite all right. No big deal. I wanted to emphasize what I thought was the most important point. Uh, uh, and what I really wanted to tell you was that the system is designed to protect the innocent and unfortunately protects a lot of guilty or uh, a lot of individuals such as your friend and Coral Gables who ought not to get the kind of protection he wants to deny you. Uh, and uh, you know, really I wanted to just emphasize, I want you to hang in there. The system does work. It will protect you. And um, you have a lot of good people out here. There are a lot of conservative people like myself and like the lady who just got off the phone with you who are very conservative philosophically but who believe, as Voltaire said, that we may not agree with what you say but we'll defend to the death your right to say it. Well, I'm, it, it sounds good in practice, my friend, and I know your intentions are good, but I don't, I don't see a line forming anywhere to do any of that, okay? And especially amongst your own, among the legal profession, uh, most of the lawyers in South Florida are too busy raping the public out there and looking to make a fast buck I- I- as opposed to, uh, you know, helping to defend the First Amendment. Well, I, I have had, uh, you know, and I'm not including Norm Kent because Norm is a terrific yeah. attorney, and thank goodness, uh, you know, I'm involved with him now. But uh, prior to Norm Kent, I've been involved with no less than a half a dozen different attorneys, and I would suggest to you that there isn't a single one of them that's got any clue of what the First Amendment's really all about, okay, or how to defend it. Well, allow me to just suggest to you that the law business is indeed a business, like many other businesses. And just as talk radio is a business to a degree, you have a product. Uh, You've got some very good people like yourself who are in the market, and you've got some people who are not so good that are in the market. But I 
let me just suggest to you, you ought not to, to generalize it. If you've had some unfortunate experiences and are presently going through an unfortunate experience, I've got to tell you, there's a lot of really good, damn hardworking people out there. And well, I'd, like know, I'd like to know. I'd like to know where friends. they are. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to know where they are. Well, come on up to Palm Beach because, County. You'll because find them. Let me tell you, uh, when I worked for Guy Gannett, they, I'm not going to mention the attorney's name, but they had one of their attorneys who supposedly one of the premier First Amendment attorneys in South Florida, and this uh -huh. gentleman helped to engineer uh, an agreement the likes of which you've never seen in your life, which we were coerced into being party to. And uh, you know, if this is if this is his idea of what the First Amendment is all about, giving giving private individuals the right to censor. Um, whatever material is said on the air, then God help us. I mean, I never heard of such a thing in my life. And th this was part of the machinations of one of our supposedly great First Amendment attorneys in this town. Well, let me tell you something. Just because they say that's the way to go, that does not mean that is the way to go. You have, when you're talking about the First Amendment, incredibly wide, broad rights. And um, I, I think most of, of us who do this kind of work, and, and I do a, a modicum myself, uh, most of us who do this kind of work really take the position that your rights are, unless you're the kind of guy that's going to stand up in a theater and yell fire, obviously some kind of speech like that is not protected. Yeah. But you're pretty much protected in almost anything you say. You know, a few years ago, I would not be able to get on your radio show like I am now and call your friend in Coral Gables a douchebag, uh, and I do think he is. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Well, you better govern yourself accordingly, sir, because God only knows this call may be being uh, traced and you'll be getting a phone call <laughs> well, that's any okay. minute now. That's okay. That, that is fine. I, I really do not care uh, because as far as I'm concerned, what I just said is protected because that is my opinion. Just like anything you say on the radio is protected because that's your opinion. Uh, you know... Uh, you don't have to agree with what someone says in order to feel that they've got a right to say that. And uh, you don't have to, uh, when you want to listen to someone on the radio or when someone is on the radio, you don't have to evaluate their lifestyle or how they live or what they do or what they think in order to decide whether or not they deserve to be on the radio. Uh, I think that's kind of that's kind of what Hitler did. Uh, I think, uh, although I don't think he had talk radio in Nazi Germany. Um, well, he had Joseph Goebbels, sir. In fact, well, there, was a piece, agree, there was a piece on the Arts and Entertainment uh, Network last night following Mein Kampf about Joseph Goebbels, and I think that it couldn't possibly be more timely. Okay, sir? Yeah. Uh, if you understand my drift? I do understand your drift. Okay, i got to run. Have a great okay. day, and I appreciate the call. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 1248 at WIOD. We have an open line in day. I might call you, Uncle Neil. My, oh, my, oh, my. Say Fox. Yeah, that's right. Laryngitis and all. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, we don't have any eighteen to forty nine son. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks I, anyway. I looked for you. I tried. I called because uh, the reason I say maybe the last call is because this call I got me no strokes. I, I called to tell you something as a big admirer of yours. When I was listening to you and Bird and Zeta and heard this kind of rhetoric starting, I first had thought because I'm in the business it was kind of some kind of shtick. Yeah, and no shtick, Sonny. Yeah, I know that now because of the, the past history. I call to tell you something, Uncle Neil. Straight from the gut, the way you produce radio for us listeners, there's only one way it's starting to appear to me that you're going to be on the radio here in this market for at least another year or less, and that is to, number one, own your own station. I know you don't like that idea. I don't either. It sounds like a big pain in the ass. Number one, own your own station. Number two, have a great sales department who can make enough money off your numbers to provide enough lawyers like Waxy has for seven years out of license mm -hmm. to keep you on the air. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. I called to tell you that. You know I'm being honest. You know I got some money. <coughs> Other than that, you know, mm -hmm. what can I say? Well, we'll be looking for it at the door, Sonny. Just a brown paper bag will do. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Take it seriously. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm. Boy. Okay, well, listen, we're at the end of another traumatic hour. We have an open line in Broward, 5 2 D, 127 at WIOD, as we take you up that Ho Chi Minh Trail to the sky. <laughs> boy, uh, don't get me started on him, okay? Oh, the frame boy. of mind that I'm in today. Don't get me started on Mr. Mr. Witzner. <laughs> hey, Jer, this is Tabby Tucking <laughs> in Jer. Oh, man. Well, let's go out and shoot a few of those jungle bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my. Yeah, that's what America's all about. Here's a payphone in Broward. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? What's happening? I'm uh, kind of nervous here. I haven't talked to you in a long, long time. Um, listen, about 10, uh, 10 or 12 years ago, I used to be a cadet with Hollywood Police mm -hmm. Department. Yeah. And you, the, one of the things I thought were pretty hypocr hypocritical there was um, they would go about, you know, you know, arresting people in movies and so forth and yeah. doing the vice things. And yet, you know, even inside the whole, inside the police department, certain police officers would have um, 
um, certain pinups of naked women or yeah. from Hustler and so forth and mm -hmm. other magazines. You know, it was like, you know... Well, see, that's because they're a bunch of virulent, wonderful, all-American, red-blooded guys in a Hollywood police force, and they just uh, don't like those homosexuals, don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it was, who are uh, obviously trolling for young boys in those establishments, even though there's nobody under the age of 18 allowed in those establishments, but they're trolling for young boys. I'm, I'm curious how that goes on, you know? Yeah. Maybe they find him, like, lying under the seats or out in the backyard or in the alley somewhere. Yeah. I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, See, I don't the problem in this country is that we've got a bunch of people, we've got a bunch of fascist pigs who can't leave other people alone, yeah. who just seize upon opportunities to destroy other people's lives. And if they really think that I'm going to let them do it to me, they're living in a dream world. If I have to become a monk, if I have to go get the operation, okay, uh, and become neuter, you know, at least then I can go on all the different talk shows. I can probably make a good living that way. I can make the circuit. I can be on Current Affair even. Yeah. Hey, listen, I went to, um, I went to Siam the Doll and... Um Armadillo Cafe. All those places are excellent. They sure are. They're really excellent. Those people are so nice there, too. Okay. Let's see, um, what's his name, Boone? Yeah, Boone's a super guy. You know, how can anybody give him a hard time? You know, it really pisses me off. Another thing, um, my wife works at the um, Miami airport, and um, she's surprised at how many um, 70, 80-year-old ex-Germans coming up from South America and Colombia and Paraguay and so forth. I guess they're the, um, the good Nazis the U.S. hit after the war or something. What do you think? Did you, did you miss? Did I miss something I didn't there? get it. Uh, she's surprised hmm. at how many what? 70, 80-year-old what? Old 70, 80-year-old German men living in South America come up here for vacation. Oh, I see. Oh. I see what you're saying, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. That's from the Adolf Eichmann School. Of <laughs> yeah. From the Adolf Eichmann yeah. Travel Bureau, yeah. Yeah, well, I think there was a good Nazis, like, um, what was it, Barbie, um... You know, all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just thought you might run there that, too. Well, we have our Klaus Barbie doll right here in the studio. We'll be selling him a special sale tomorrow. Have a great day. Okay, thank you, Bob. One thirty at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463. 524-WIOD, Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. How are you doing? Great. Terrific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, I was glad to hear about that lady's dream, about you being in Cuba. I was Wasn't worried. that exciting? I, I couldn't believe it. Bring either. me back some Havanas next time you go. <laughs> yeah, I was standing on a street corner yelling, to hell with Fidel, to hell with Fidel. I wanted to ask you something about Zeta Four. Yes. When you mention that they look at the numbers and they're satisfied, are you making a joke or are they actually feel like that? Hey, I got news for you. If anybody, you know, they say one thing. But if anybody in the world can be satisfied with a 100,000-watt Class C FM station with that signal in a market like this, doing one shares all throughout the day, including now in morning drive, I will guarantee you that we are billing, and, I'm, you know, it's nobody's business what the numbers are, but we are billing for this radio station at WIOD just from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in this time slot. We're billing more money than they do all year on Zeta, okay, on the whole radio station. I would go to the bank on that. If, okay? I, if I was on the board... Or management or something, and I knew that they felt like that. I would be furious. I would clean house. If I well, what does that tell you about the kind of company it is over there? Why do Why do you think we got the hell out of there? I don't know why it took me four and a half years to do it, but uh, you know, we finally cut the umbilical cord with Guy Gannett. I mean, they're just impossible. Well, you just keep up the good work, and you know, keep fighting. Okay. Okay. See you later. You know, and 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 if those people out there think that I enjoy this, that we enjoy having to be in a constant battle. You people are nuts. I mean, I remember those days, in the early days at Zeta, and especially in the first few months at INZ there in the daytime, we were having a great time. Oh, yeah. You'd look forward to coming to work in the morning, man. It was just, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. We were having a great time. The audience was into it. We didn't have to, you know, give the numbers out eight million times and pump for phone calls. Phones would ring off the hook. We just, we just had a real great time going. I don't think the INZ thing will ever be recaptured again, the thing we had in the daytime there the first few months, simply because nobody's got the balls to let people go on the air and do some funny stuff. Summer of 87. Oh, yeah. The whole summer. It was incredible until this witch hunt started in the late summer of 87. That's right, about September. And up mm -hmm. until that time, we were having a great time. And nobody was being harassed, and nobody was being molested, and nobody was being recruited, and nobody was being solicited. We were just having a good time entertaining the audience. And now, for the last 19 months, I mean, it's on and off. Talk about, look at that, FPNL just had a nervous break. <laughs> we had every line lit on the board, and now FPNL just hiccuped, and, and uh, everything went out. Look at that computer. Look at, can you see the computer? 
Take a look at that. I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I really think this all goes back to those comments about the Westminster dog show. Yeah. I really think that's what they're getting right. back for. You're right. We'd have just laid off. You know, it's one thing about, you know, <laughs> Sam Jankovic and U of M and Jimmy Johnson, and it was one thing about Alpo dog food, and it was one thing about Greg Budell and Donald and all that. But I got news for you, man. When we, when we uh, laid into that Westminster dog show, that's going a little too goddamn far, okay? Yeah, you finally did it. Yeah. I That's knew, going over the edge. I knew sooner or later you'd go too far. Yeah. And that was it. No question. <laughs> Shame on us. Yeah. Anyway, good afternoon to you. It's 133 at WIOD, and I want to tell you about the Pizza Loft. Hey, listen, now you can even fax them your order for That's lunch right. at uh, this number, 2660251. Is that cool? And if you haven't tried the Pizza Loft yet, in fact, aren't they bringing in food on Wednesday? Yes, they are. That's what we understand. Mm -hmm. And it is the home of the world's best pizza, and now they have an incredible service. Just fax in the order. It'll be ready for you when you come in. So enjoy it either in the comfortable dining room or take it home and enjoy it there or sit out in the middle of Flagler Street and whatever you like, okay? <laughs> or they'll deliver it. Okay. Just a joke, Joey. It's just a little joke. Man, look at this. This is a mess. Mess. All his copy is just poured out of the book now. I mean, I realize that was major urgency to get that because I typed so many messages on the screen. <laughs> well, but, uh, boy, this is just a mess. God is punishing you. Yeah, evidently God's it's, punishing me for my gay, uh, wayward ways. It's at Westminster. Okay, Dodge let's uh, get some calls on here while I put the copy book back together. It should only take till about four o'clock. Miami, hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Hey, terrific, pal. All right, hey, Bert, how, how are you? Oh. Come on down here and put this goddamn place back together for us, okay, pal? Uh, it's too late. I don't think I can. What a it. mess! What a mess! God. Well, listen. Um, congratulations on your on your ratings and stuff. April's still trying to stop a Bob Soper weather cart from last Wednesday. That's how bad things are in this joint. <laughs> Mostly sunny and my... Bob, shut up already, okay? We'll let you know when it's time to start talking. Oh, uh, that Bob. Is we, got the only, we got the only cart machine in America that just runs by itself. You know, when it, remember we used to have that one at Zeta once in a while? Oh, it would take off by, by itself. itself yeah. Just by itself. It would just take off and go nuts. Yeah, I think some of your engineers must have went from Zeta and came over to IOD with you. Now that you mention it... <laughs> that would explain a lot of things. Not to mention any names. Yeah. Um... Listen, um, I, I think, you know, when all this started with, the, with, with your attorney friend down there, uh, you know, I was just co sort of aggravated the first thing. I pissed off, and I was just disgusted with what's going on. You know, it's just, uh, when, when's it going to end, Neil? It's going to end when the powers that be at this company or some attorney somewhere decides that they can go into a court before a judge who's willing to stay awake long enough to hear the facts and somebody grants an injunction and says to this individual, you're going to have to find a new hobby that what you are doing is not legal, it is harassment, and it is just uh, unacceptable. And it's also going to stop when the Florida bar says you're not going to be allowed to continue doing this under the guise of practicing law. You know, as, as mad as you are, this guy, you guys kind of feel sorry for him. This is what all his life is. It's just no, I don't feel sorry for him at all, sir, because I have never in my life encountered anyone anyone i mean i've encountered some pretty bizarre people but i've never encountered anyone who was so ridden with hatred and homophobia that he was willing to devote virtually every waking minute of every day for nearly two years to the destruction of another human being and, and that's what this is all about and i don't care what the individual tries to couch it as or to claim this is all about nothing could be further from the truth plain and simple that's exactly what this campaign is about it is a homophobic witch hunt i'll give you a classic example you, you'll laugh when you hear this the Weekly News, which is the local gay newspaper, and again, this makes it obviously a legitimate news stories. They wrote two news stories about this a few days ago, a couple of weeks ago, which I mentioned on the air. Well, needless to say, our attorney friend marched down to the Weekly News headquarters and picked up five copies. I don't know why he needed five, but five <laughs> copies of the newspaper so he could read for himself in this horrendous gay magazine. And, you know, of course, we, in the article talks about it being a homophobic campaign, which is what I described it to them as. The other day, and we get a copy of it, so naturally, since a copy is available to me, I'm free to talk about it, in which our attorney friend says, oh, I'm not homophobic at all, but did you see that wonderful publication? That, and this is a letter to Tad Foote at the University of Miami. Did you see that publication, the Weekly News? Uh, you know, and, and the first sentence he goes on that he's not homophobic, and then he goes in to attack the Weekly News because it's a homosexual paper and all of these ads and di disgusting this and disgusting that, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, I mean, you know, anybody who's trying to mask this as something else, he must think that we're simpletons. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Yeah. And then we got Mr. Siderman coming on the air here, another great homophobe accusing me of being a bigot. Boy, that's that's the pot calling the kettle pink, if I ever heard it. Uh, 
You got it, Neil. Okay. You know, we got the support from all of us here. One other thing, um, how did how did the motivation station do in the ratings? Hey, you know, it's funny you should mention that because I don't recall mentioning them. At no, any that's point. a good question. Let's take a look here. Let's see if we can find those famous pages now. Six a.m. to midnight. You may not have gone that far down on the list. How much further can it go? It'd be well, it could go, you know. Ah, uh, wait a minute. I'm looking now. Like Veda, but I mean, it couldn't go any lower than that. 6 a.m. to midnight, just a second here. Uh, geez, where's those 12-plus numbers? They keep disappearing. Mm. Boy, this is such a mess that it just... I'm embarrassed. I'm humiliated and mortified. mortified. <laughs> I can't find it. How about men? Would that do 18... Uh, that's, well, oh, no, uh, this is this is persons 18-plus. Well, I'm sure they don't have any teenagers, so this would do. Yeah. Persons 18-plus, W-O-C-N, W-R-M-F, a point six, W-R-H-C, a point eight. They, uh, they didn't make the cut, pal. <laughs> I'm well, not. I'm not joking. They're not. They're not on here. Well, Zeta's going to get those coming numbers next. You'll yeah, see. we're looking forward to. I'm those not things. joking. They're not. Uh, they didn't make the cut. WMBN at a point nine. RHC a point eight. RMF a point six, which isn't even in the market. And WOCNAM a point five. They didn't make the list. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. I'll, I'll find some category where they showed up. <laughs> hey, listen, did you, Neil. Did you hear about the new change on the Zeta Morning Show? No. Um, you know how the keeping the military thing. They added another person. They put now they have Corporal Brad and, and Captain Dave and, and the Colonel. Now they have Rose Folger. He's a major idiot. Yeah, there you go. Good thinking, pal. <laughs> All right, Neil. Thank Thanks you. a lot. That's why you didn't mention them, because they're not I on the list. can't find them. Let me yeah. look uh, on the weekend. Is there somewhere where they showed up here? Here's WMBM with a point eight. WKT? No. What is it? WW. H N? No, no. It's WWN. WWN. WNN. WNN. No, it's WNN. That's right. It's not on here. When? I'm telling you, it's not on here anywhere. How about 7 to midnight? Well, I doubt that. I don't even no. know. Are they on at night? <laughs> I don't know. It could be just a daytime, or I don't have any idea. No, I've never, I've never heard it in my... Now, WRMF has a point four at night. They're, plus. they're, they're, didn't, they're under a point four. Good heavens. Here's uh, Monday. Here's 12 plus. This is the total week, okay? <laughs> 6 a.m. to midnight. Here's, uh, let's start with Zeta. That's pretty low. 1-6, CMQ, AM, 1-5, FTL, 1-2... Radio Suave, a 1-1. One, one. WMBM, a point nine. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it? There's another page there missing somewhere. Oh. Stay tuned, pal. It could be on that missing page. <laughs> Wait till we find the rest of the story, okay? We're looking for it. Uh, here's a mobile disappeared. Pompano, hello. Yes. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Can you fax me a pizza? Yeah, we sure will, right away. <laughs> I, like the, I like the way you did it. Is it Neil? It's low calorie on that uh, fax machine, pal. I love that. I've got a fax machine. I want to see a pizza come out of it. I love that commercial. Yeah, I'd like to have that uh, the stuffed shells with the uh, meatballs come out of the fax <laughs> machine. Well, that would be delicious, wouldn't it? That's great. God, it scared me to death about the apples. Wouldn't that be something, by the way? Hey, I got home and no. My wait wife a minute, before you go on, out. sir. My wife is cussing me out because oh, my God. kids got fifteen. <laughs> Different types of baby came up food with a great with idea, and he's babbling about <laughs> apples and baby food. Yeah, well, no, it I is true. I, if anybody you're missed 60 Minutes... You're the first person I talked to who knew anything about it. Well, that's because they're too stupid to watch 60 Minutes, okay? Hey, they're too busy watching those other important shows. 21 Jump Street. Yeah. 21 Jump Street. Uh, oh, yeah, they're watching know, Johnny Depp. I love what you guys are doing. It's great. You know, the right to bear arms I found out on uh, Cartoon Saturday with my child, that that means you can wear short sleeve shirts. So I guess freedom of speech is that uh, you can talk as long as you write it down first. Mm -hmm. Hello, come in. Yeah, now I'm just reading something here that I find astonishing, okay? Uh-huh. Incredible. What's that? I can't, I can't, it's it involved with the Hollywood police again, okay? Oh, God. I'm reading uh, some material here, which I'm not going to discuss yet on the air until I've discussed it with my attorney, but it's just incredible. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell sir. you what, you, as far as your attorneys go, uh, you're going to be starting your new uh, radio show soon by yourself. You're going to start your own uh, show. I didn't know that. And your own radio station. I'd love to be your My engineer. own radio station? What are you talking about? Have you got Sonny Fox disease? No. As all these people are after you and it's like the uh, right to bear arms. You know, they're getting on you because you're not allowed to talk. And uh, I think you've got the money and the talent to start your own. You should. I think there's uh, about 600,000 people out there right now listening that agree with me that want you to start your own show. On what? Well, are you what? are you buying the radio station? What do you mean? Like on my microwave oven or my pop-up toaster, I'm going to start my own show from the house? No, we can just do it with a little tiny crystal radio okay, and yeah. 15 yeah. feet. Okay, know? and I can go on welfare, right? Well, it's a good <laughs> thing we've been kind to the Camillo's house because I'm going to be their next customer. Okay, have a great day, pal. You're in a dream world. 147 at WIOD. 
And if Sonny is still listening, and I'm sure he is, Sonny, don't go by on one of those 10-watt radio stations, please. Just don't do it. Mm -mm. You know, you're not going to believe this, but Spike Wise just brought us in the top 37. This is 12 plus in the latest trend in the Arbitron ratings. Mm -hmm. WEAT AM had a point two. WJNO, that's the Lee Fowler factor, had mm -hmm. a point three. Mm -hmm. That's about what Lee. Lee always has a three something, <laughs> a three point something. Only this time the points in front of the three. WYFX, the Big Fox, had a point four. Yeah. Wacky FM. I didn't even know they had an FM. <laughs> Has a point four. KAT a point four. Uh -huh. QAM a point five. This is this is the whole week, Monday through Sunday, six a.m. to midnight. QAM is a point five. That's about as close to being off the air as you can. Man. And OCN at a point five. Okay. Mm. WWN or WNN or W, the motivation station <laughs> didn't motivate anybody. They didn't make the cut. They're not on here. Below. And this and this even includes. A bunch of stations, like in Palm Beach County, yeah. that beat them out. Yeah. Okay, and the motivation station, and, and you remember the Neil Rogers factor that was going to get them all that big audience in the midday when they went on the air. Do you remember that? Sure. General the manager said, "Well, all those people that don't want to hear Neil Rogers and that filthy stuff and being called douchebags, they're going to come over to us." Sure. Yeah. Well, boy, I guess they're there. <laughs> And by the way, if he's listening today, the general manager of that station, we have a few others that we'd like to ship over to, but they just insist on sticking around here. Here's the Duke in a mobile. Hello. Hello there. I know I sounded a little apoplectic last time I spoke to you in Maui, Hawaii last week. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, you know how it is in Maui. You get a little high from being there, and then having just climbed down 10,000 feet of a mountain, it's incredible. Okay. Watching the sunrise. All yeah. Right. Well, how you guys doing? <laughs> well, you sure making up for last week, boy. You have no material at all today. Well, I'm just calling to say hello. No material here. You guys got all the material. That uh, bird ball commercial sure sounds like a fix. I mean, that that doesn't sound real. It's real. I know it is. Trust me. Oh, ah, absolutely. One of our fine sponsors, and leave him alone, sir. Well, I've been bowling there for quite a long time. I haven't seen any birds flying around, though. Good. Have you? You want to say hello to a toll taker? No. No, nah, never mind. Where, I don't friendly. like the toll takers, okay? They make me nauseous. In I fact, know. I'm glad you mentioned that I'm going home on Friday, and the toll takers at the sunrise exit of the Florida Turnpike ought to hang their heads in shame. They had two booths only open. There was enough traffic to kill a horse. They only had two booths open right next to each other, so all the traffic was converging and mixing in, and there were like three booths where there were just people hanging out and standing around. And as one... This one woman, and I, I don't even know whether to call her a woman because I don't think she's got enough intelligence to classify as a human being. Every transaction was like when... You remember when Jefferson's was in business? Oh, yeah. And every transaction used to take a half an hour, and that's one of the reasons they went out of business. Well, that's, think, that's how it was at the toll booth, okay? I think the toll booth uh, people down here, the authority that runs it, learned how to run it from the Canadians. Yeah. Well, no, they have to take a test first. They have to have an IQ of minus three. Well, it's like they have to take a discount rate on what money you're giving them to make sure that they're giving you the correct amount of change. Yeah. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say hello to you guys. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to have material every call. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, you sure approved that with this call. <laughs> have a great day. Have a good one. Bye. The Duke. The WXRK Duke. General Manager Tom Chuzano said the station has not filed any charges yet in connection with the yesterday's on-the-air fracas between morning bad boy Howard Stern and Elaine Boozler's publicist manager, but we're keeping our options open, he said. Hmm. Stern, as is his wont, shook things up in Hollywood Tuesday afternoon while taping his morning K-Rock show at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in conjunction with the Grammy Awards. The fracas began when Stern tried to get the attention of comedian Boozler. Over here, over here, come here and sit down with us, Stern cried out to the comedian through a bullhorn in an effort to lure her to the K-Rock booth and microphones. Boozler's publicist manager, Steve Gerbson, didn't seem to enjoy Stern's bellowing and told Stern he wasn't funny. He, Gerbson, then slugged Stern with a bullhorn, said Chuzano. <coughs> Gary Del Abate, Stern's producer, boy Gary, tried to mm -hmm. separate them and was doused with a glass of soda. Mm. Fortunately, nobody was seriously hurt. The show continued taping for airing yesterday morning in New York. Stern often takes a show on the road. Two years ago, when he was in London, he was forced to relocate his show after being ousted by a club when the owners complained he was making too much of a ruckus. That Howard. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then Elaine's side of the story is on Liz Smith's column here. This must be the uh, Daily News mm -hmm. or the Daily or the New York Post.